and I'm here to do the eagerly anticipated video on microneedling. So I'm talking everything about microneedling, the how to do it, the different devices that I've tried, um, the results, what you get, what you can expect, etc. Everything. Start by talking about the wording that's used. So you'll hear it called microneedling or derma roller derma roller ing um, and what it actually is is the process is called microneedling that's what you do to your skin you microneedle your skin using a derma roller or a derma pen or a derma stamp but most people use a derma roller so that's where the two words have come from it is as the name suggests micro needles so tiny tiny little needles that are pushed into the skin that cause tiny injuries so micro injuries that force the skin to produce collagen to repair and rebuild the tissue. As I said before, collagen and elastin are what makes your skin plump and youthful looking. And so more of that is good. And the benefits that you can get from microneedling are, it can get rid of fine lines, pores, deep wrinkles, scars, it can help scars look a lot better. It can treat hyperpigmentation, it can plump up your lips, it can help your skincare to penetrate deeper and therefore be more effective and it's even been investigated for hair loss. From a research point of view, I'm not going to go into individual studies because there are there are a lot of studies out there. Um, there's more studies for the longer length of needle, I'll talk about the length of needles in a moment, but there are more studies for the kind of one millimeter needle and above but the research does show that this works in aging it de definitely does work it works to um, produce collagen and it works on all of the things that i listed the area that needs a bit more research is hair loss so let's look at the devices the first one i'm going to talk about is a derma roller because that is what most people use and so this is what a derma roller looks like um, I did buy mine from Amazon. There have been people like Caroline Hirons, etc., saying not to buy a cheap one from Amazon or eBay, etc. But I have to be honest, I've looked at the more expensive ones and I can't see much of a difference. To get a good derma roller, the recommendation is to get 540 needles, and this has 540 needles, that are titanium, and these are titanium. And the more expensive ones I've found also have 540 needles that are titanium. Um, I guess the only thing is I don't know anything about titanium and maybe there are different qualities of titanium or maybe they are just better made. I had no issues with this at all. Now you see how it's got a little bit of nail varnish on there that's because I have one at 0.25 millimeters and this one is 0.5 millimeters and they both look exactly the same and so I just wanted to identify them so that's why that's there. So I'll talk about the derma roller and how to use it and the pain levels etc in those sections but the advantages of having a derma roller are easily available for everybody they are inexpensive i think this was five pound 99 um long lasting you only need to change these about every six months no plug as with one of the things i'm going to show you but perhaps a downside would be that this needs to be sterilized you need to plunge it into alcohol to clean it etc um which is perhaps a little bit of a disadvantage with others where you can just change the needles the disadvantage of this is you will need to probably buy more than one because you may want to start off low or you may want to use a lower um, needle, a lower length of needle on your eyes, on your neck. Um, maybe you want one for the body. You can't. You only get one needle length. So if you want more than one, you'll need to buy more than one device. Next is a derma stamp, and this is the derma stamp. Comes in this bottle here. Again, inexpensive. This was around about the six or seven pound mark. This has only twelve needles, um, and these are stainless steel. Now like with the derma roller you would have to buy the the exact lengths that you want so this one is 0.5 as is my derma roller so that i can compare them um and this one is best for like little precise areas i wanted to try it to see if the pain levels were any different and obviously review it for you guys but i'm not sure you'd use this all over your face because it there are reasons you would do that, but it would take an awful long time. This would have the same advantages and disadvantages as the derma roller. Um, you need to clean it every time. You'd need to buy different devices. And with this one in particular, like I said, it would take a long, long time um, to use all over your face. The final device is comes in a box like this, but I've already plugged it in so you can see. And it's this. Um, this is an electric automatic derma pen and so what you get with this are disposable needles so this is the device and then you get needles like this so they come in little packets like this and you would just put this in every time you were using it 
So from that point of view, like I said, it's a little bit um, more convenient in that you don't have to clean this, you just change the needle head. But that does mean that you need to buy more needle heads, it costs you a little bit more money, and this is obviously a lot more expensive. This machine was £58.99, but that did include 20 needle heads. The great advantage about this is you can choose the length you want. So you've got a little twisting thing here that takes you to from 0.25 to two millimeters. So you could use this for any part of your face or body. The advantages of this Derma Pen are that some people find this less painful. I'll talk about pain levels in that section. Um, it's probably a bit faster. The uh, disadvantages are, of course, it's expensive, but also you, you really need to use a serum and a slippy serum, so something greasy or oily before you use that. Um, and again, I'll talk about that when we're talking about serums that you put on before, during and after. Okay, let's talk needle lengths and how what the recommendations are for how often you should use them, etc. You'll find there is a bit of as with anything, not controversy, but a different opinion depending on who you ask. Some people will say one millimeter for, say, pigmentation, others would say 0.5. Um, there are things that are universally agreed, such as anything below 0.5 millimeter will not um, cause that production of collagen. You need to be using a 0.5 millimeter or above in order to get the collagen induction therapy, um, which is just another name for the microneedling, collagen induction therapy. So anything under 0.5 millimeters, so 0.25 millimeters, 0.2 millimeters, 0.3 millimeters, that will help your skincare to penetrate deeper and shouldn't be painful really. 0.5 or below is for penetration of skincare. 0.5 is considered to be good for fine lines and scarring. 0.75 is good for pigmentation. That's where it can help pigmentation and kind of moderate wrinkles. Millimeter is for deep wrinkles and a 1.5 millimeter is for kind of professional use. It's what you would do in the salon or you can use it on your body. They don't recommend using a 1.5 millimeter needle at home and I certainly wouldn't recommend that either. So with how and when to use, there is of course um, a discord out there, but most people agree that anything above 0.5 millimeters should be used once a month and you should give yourself 30 days for your skin to recover. Um, and so the recommendation is that for a moderate result, you should use between 0.75 and one millimeter needles once a month, wait that 30 days and then do it again. Um, and continue to do so for as long as you desire. In that 30 day period, you could use something below 0.5, so a 0.25 millimeter, for example, um, to help the deeper penetration of your skincare. But how often you do that would depend on how your skin reacted to the intense treatment that you did. Um, you know, if you did a one millimeter treatment, it's gonna be a lot more red and sore perhaps and so you might want to wait five days if you only used a 0.5 millimeter you might be able to do um, a 0.25 millimeter session in two days it will just depend on your skin but it's thought you can use say a 0.25 millimeter some people can use it every day some people once a week um, but that's something you can use in that 30 day period while your skin is healing you won't see the results for three to six months um, if you were tested if your skin um, underwent tests in at the six week mark it should show that you had increased collagen fibers but the actual visible results won't be there until the three to six month mark you shouldn't use this if you have active acne if you have active cold sores and also if you actually are prone to cold sores you should really use with caution because it can, I don't know how, but it can cause a cold sore to appear. Um, I don't know whether it's because it may be active but you're not yet aware of it and it somehow activates it to become an actual cold sore, I'm not sure, but you do need to be very careful if you're prone to cold sores. There are some risks that come with using this, um, as there is with anything where you're breaking the skin. Um, and the risk is infection, number one, and reaction, number two. So infection can be minimized by cleanliness, by making sure that you clean all of your tools correctly and thoroughly. Um, I have bought a very soft child's toothbrush to gently clean my derma rollers. And I say gently because you know you don't want to be bending any of those needles because they're very, very fine. Um, I also soak it, I submerge it in isopropyl alcohol and then I've also got a spray. I've got an, a disinfectant spray here but this is just isopropyl alcohol as well and I can just spray it and that means that it's nice and 
sterilized with the derma stamp and like I said I've got this spray that I can use to spray on both of these um, and just kind of let that evaporate before using because obviously I don't want to directly be pushing alcohol into my skin but, and it will dissipate. So the more hygienic you are the less risk of infection so for example if you wash your hands before you start the session do your microneedling and then apply serums you can do better than that because um, if you think about it you've then been holding the bottom of the micro needle you've been picking things up and putting them down I would say wash your hands after you've done the micro needling because you're not touching your face with a micro needle um, right before you put on your serums. I wanted to be really vigilant about not getting infection you can use something like this this is neosporin it's an antibiotic ointment or you could use um, an antiseptic cream. I used a little bit of this with my serums in my chin area because I am acne prone and I just wanted to make sure that I didn't um, cause a breakout. The second risk is a uh, reaction so to have an allergic reaction to the process. You can reduce your risk of that with the things that you use on your face afterwards so I'll talk about that when we talk about serums um, but just to note there's nothing you can do to completely eliminate the risk of infection or reaction and the longer needle you use the more risk of infection and reaction okay let's talk about how you do this the first thing you do obviously is remove your makeup and then you need to cleanse your skin so if ever there's a time to double cleanse this is it what you don't want to be doing is using needles and making holes in your skin when there are remnants of makeup or dirt or anything on your skin. And ironically, this is a time I would recommend to use your Sanskrit Saponin face wash if you have it. Um, because do you remember I reviewed it and said it's, it strips the skin a little bit um, and it's not something I would therefore want to be using every day. But this would be a good time to use it because it literally does suck out all of the dirt and make sure your skin is squeaky clean. And that's what you want. If your skin is clean, you can start microneedling. That's if you're okay with the pain levels, you don't want to use anything on your skin to try and alleviate any pain. So that's just a personal choice. For me, I started off trying it without the um, numbing cream and then I, I tried it with the numbing cream. So this is the stage where you can either start the microneedling or just go ahead and put your numbing cream on. Once you put the numbing cream on, you have to wait 15, 20 minutes for it to take effect. Whatever you do, don't start microneedling whilst you still have the numbing cream on your face. You do need to remove it first. Use a cotton wool pad, just with water on it would be fine, or you could use micellar water or um, a really gentle toner. I started off trying this one, this numbing cream, which is called Anodesin, um, and it has lidocaine in it and also well, that's an emollient actually, so it doesn't matter, but it is a piles cream, it's a hemorrhoid cream, um, but it was also advertised as being good for using with a micro needle. This is rubbish. I would not recommend this at all. If you want an almond cream, don't get this one. It's pointless. Um, however, one of you recommended to use Emla cream 5% and I got this from Superdrug and this is really good. So if you are wanting to use an almond cream, I would say get this. I haven't used it all over my face. I think that would be a really weird feeling and I think that you don't, you don't need it all over your face. You perhaps need it around your lips, around your eyes, maybe on your neck but again that's quite a big area and as you can see you only get a little tube um so it's not something to be putting all over your face that would just feel very odd to have a numb face <laughs> so you've cleansed your face put your numbing ointment on if you want to and you've taken your numbing ointment off we're now ready to start the microneedling process generally the recommendation is to put serum on after the microneedling process but I don't see any harm in putting serum on beforehand. You really want to put a serum on first that is a non-greasy one that won't affect the other products you're putting on. I would say use something like a, a hyaluronic acid. So this is the NIODS one, the MMHC, and this is the hyalamide one, or something like an ascorbyl glucoside. This is a vitamin C derivative. That would be a great thing to have on your skin before doing the microneedling. The copper amino isolate serum would be another one that would be really good for that. So how do you do it exactly? So what happens is you need to hold your skin taut. So you know the way if you were using a wax strip or if you were epilating, you need to hold your skin. So hold your skin like this and use the derma roller across it. I'm not sure if I actually did that. My demonstration is using my forehead. I used my derma stamp this side, I think derma pen this side and derma roller in the middle. So the way that you do it with a derma roller, again, there's, there's conflicting advice, but generally it seems to be that you do five passes each way. And each way means vertically, across, diagonally, both ways. So 20 passes in total. So you'll go one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, 
one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. The same thing applies to the derma stamp. So you would, if you have just a little area here that you wanted to treat, I would start by doing a little line up and then across and then both diagonally five ways each time, um, which would become quite painful with that, I would think. With the Derma Pen, it's a bit more effective, um, and I don't think that you need to go across each area. I, it doesn't seem to give exact directions. It tells you the exact direction you should go, so it's got arrows like pointing from, oh God, <laughs> I gave myself a fright there. I thought it had needles in it. Um, you can, it tells you the direction to go, so you could start from here and go upwards, but it doesn't tell you to repeat it. And having used it, I think you would just do one pass um, with this, but you could, of course, experiment with more. Let's talk pressure. So I know a lot of people want to know, well, exactly how much pressure should I be putting on using the Derma Roller? And there's two points. Number one, I don't think that with a Derma Roller or even a Derma Stamp that you can put too much pressure on. Um, and I say that because with the Derma Stamp, when you use it, I'm going to push it into my hand here, there's only so far you can go. So the needles are 0.5 millimeters above that plastic, that yellow plastic that you can see. And so you push it as far until you get to the yellow plastic and then that's it done. And so you can't go overboard with the Derma Stamp. That's more or less the same situation with this. You couldn't put too much pressure on because the needles can only go as far as that pink roller and no further. So you can't push them in too far. Um, but I also think that your pain levels will stop you putting too much pressure with this because unless you're doing it to somebody else and that's a different story, but you will only be able to do it at a certain amount of pressure without it causing pain. But I don't think that you should worry about doing it too hard because it just goes against everything that the body is used to causing yourself pain. So it's like it would be very hard, they say, almost impossible to stab yourself because your body's reaction is just gonna be to lighten up the pressure. I'd say, if anything, most of us are using too light a pressure. Pretty firm pressure on, but if you're worried about if you're going too light and if you're not using enough pressure, then look at how your skin reacts. Um, to me, it's quite a firm presser, pressure because you are having to put some pressure to push those needles into your skin. If you use a really light rolling technique such as that, nothing is happening. The needles are not going into my skin. You need to be able to feel the needles going into your skin. So when I push on it there, I can feel the needles are going into my skin. It should at the very least feel uncomfortable, but have a look at how your skin's reacting. So if you have no redness at all, then you, you're not using it correctly. You're not pushing the needles in your skin. If you have if you're using a 0.5 millimeter or above and feel no discomfort whatsoever and see no redness, then I would suggest you're using a pressure that is too light and you need to, like I said, be putting a firm pressure on so that the needles are actually pushing into your skin. Bleeding is normal with it. Um, I wouldn't say that if you're not seeing bleeding, you're not doing it right though, because everybody's skin will react differently. But for me, using a 0.5 millimeter roller stamp or derma pen it does produce little spots of blood not every bit of it bleeds but there is little spots of blood that i do need to wipe away um, and so that's nothing to worry about that is part of the process thing to talk about is where can you use this can you use it on your neck your lips your eyelids where can you use it so it doesn't recommend nobody recommends to use it on your eyelids so actually this part the lid part and the crease area the very sensitive skin area and honestly i don't know well, I'm not gonna do this as a challenge, but I don't know it, that anybody could bear the pain of having the microneedling done on, on the eyelids. The thought of it makes my eyes water. Um, the skin is way too sensitive there. And you know, this part here, your eyeballs right underneath it. So why would you want to be putting needles near it? I just think you would be crazy to be doing any microneedling on your lid or even on this crease bit here because that's still protecting your eyeball. The recommendation from those in the know is not to do this area at all, but that if you must, then do under the brow area and only use a 0.5 millimeter and nothing more. Um, and so that's the area I've done. I have done all under my brow bone with a 0.5 millimeter. So that's eyes. Can you do under the eyes? Absolutely. But again, you wouldn't want to be going right close to your lid. You wouldn't want to be going as far as that. I'd say I went to about here. I was trying to 
get as close to the wrinkles as I could or as close to the fine lines as I could. But this area again is super sensitive. It's where I used to have um, Botox in my crow's feet and I, this was always the bit that made my eyes water, the bit in the forehead and the middle here was absolutely fine. But the bit in the, that part of my eye was excruciating to me and my eyes would always stream. Um, and so I don't think you would want to be using anything higher than a 0.5 millimeter in this area. It's, it's recommended again, not to do lips at all. And the reason for that is that it can be uneven. It can come out as an uneven result. But lips is one of the areas I was really interested in using this because I have got a very thin top lip. I've tried to sort of overline it a little bit today. I'm also using the Esho, Esho is it called? Esho Sculpt, yeah. The Desiem Esho Sculpt serum on my lips. And I was really, really interested in using a Derma Roller on my lips. But like I said, when you read it, it doesn't recommend it at all. That doesn't mean I'm not going to do it, um, but it does mean, obviously I can't recommend that you do it because it's, it's not recommended by professionals. They say that the result can just be, you might get a little bit of collagen in one area and not in another, and so it would be lumpy. I'm not sure why that's the case with lips and nowhere else. I'm, I just don't really understand that. But what I would say is it would be very difficult, or it is very difficult to use um, a derma roller or any kind of derma stamp, derma pen on the lips. So I have found. Again, I would say that having lip filler to me was excruciating. It wasn't a little bit uncomfortable, it was excruciating, really, really painful. Even with um, the best time I had it done was with Dr. Bong and he put a really strong anesthetic on my lips. And even then it was painful. It wasn't excruciating, but it was painful. Um, and so trying to do this over my lips, I can't use a 0.5 millimeter derma roller over my lips. It's just too much. I tried the stamp. And it's interesting with the stamp because, and I will, I am going to talk about pain levels separately, but I managed to push it in in the middle of my lip here and I could almost instantly feel that bee stung feeling. You know, they almost instantly kind of, not swelled up, it was a tiny, tiny bit of swelling. Don't know if this makes me sound weird or not, but I kind of liked that. <laughs> I just felt like that's exactly where I wanted a little bit of swelling, if you like. I did want them to plump up. And I feel like ever since I did that, there has been a little bit of fullness there, um, but it could be the Esho Sculpt because I've used this way after using the Sculpt. So it could be that that's starting to work. So lips, not recommended, but if you are going to try it, please don't use anything over 0.5 millimeters because you don't want to end up with uneven lumpy lips, you know, um, and honestly, I think that would be really painful anyway. The final area is the neck. And yes, you can use it on the neck and it confirms that you can use it on the neck. But again, it recommends no more than 0.5 millimeters because as a lot of us know, with testing out retinol and retinoid products, the neck is much more sensitive than the face. Um, you'll know how hardy your skin is there and I know that I'm more sensitive in that area. But me being me, I was foolish and used a 0.75 on my chest. And I'll show you what it looks like now, but it is one week later and it looks like I've got a Superman sign on my chest. Um, the, the skin is now not red, not itchy. It's just gone a kind of almost tan color. Um, so I don't know how long that's gonna take to heal, but I'll show you a picture if I've got a picture or a video or something of when I first did it. So yes to the neck, but I wouldn't recommend using anything above 0.5 millimeters. I'm gonna leave this now as being part one so that it's not too long a video, uh, but feel free to join me in part two if you'd like to know.